20 years. What a time stretch. I mean, I still remember my first year in this country. You see, we had all kinds of different measurements. We had grams, kilograms, meters, kilometers, Celsius. Oh, my poor grandmother, she was trying to bake something and she put it on 200 degrees. <laughs> and uh, an hour later, nothing was happening. And then 30 more minutes, nothing was happening. But you see, in Celsius, that would actually bake pretty good. And um, there was another time at Subway, they asked me, well, what size sandwich would you like, six inch or one foot? And I said, I'd like six foot, please. <laughs> and um, I remember we were in Florida, my husband was working and I was touring different homes and, and then I told him, that house was so huge, it was 9,000 square miles. You see, it's all kinds of little things that foreigners have to learn. Like I was at the restaurant and they said, how would you like your steak, medium? And I said, no, I would like a small portion, please. <laughs> now, um, in our country, uh, we often had shortages of some basic goods and you had to show some kind of passport or proof of residency to be able to buy them. And so there was a Russian family here in America, they went grocery shopping. So they put all their stuff in a basket and then went to the cashier and, um, well, they didn't have enough cash. So the cashier said, well, do you have a visa? And they said, we'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, and anyway, the, so they, they came back and they showed him the visa, the document that admits them to the United States. And I don't think I have to tell you guys about taking expressions literally when you don't know any different because there was a Russian family visiting with an American family and when they were leaving, American lady was like, well, you all come back. And they turned and looked at each other. <laughs> Did we forget something? And they started going back, you know. <laughs> so um, one of my first like real serious jobs in America was uh, I was working for this broker. He was trading investment securities and, um, you know, signing companies for 1K plans. So first day on the job, he was telling me about trading a lot of shares. Now, Soviet Union was socialist country and we didn't trade anything. And I've never heard the word shares for that matter. So <laughs> for some reason, as I was listening, I heard chairs instead of shares. And so at the end, he explained to me, he said, do you understand everything? I said, yeah, I think so. And he said, do you have any questions? And I looked around and said, but where do you keep all those uh, chairs? <laughs> anyway, and then one time somebody, this was the same boss, one time somebody called Douglas called and my boss was in there and I said, can I take a message? He said, yeah, tell him Doug called. And names are really tricky. I mean, I knew that this was a very common name, so I felt embarrassed to ask, you know, how do you spell this? <laughs> I just did my best and uh, put that pink slip on my boss's desk. And later when he was in the office, I heard him laughing. He said, Helen, come here. And I was like, who called? And I look at my slip and I wrote D-U-C-K. <laughs> I said, Doug called? <laughs> did he say any quack quack? <laughs> You know, and <laughs> of course, mistake I made often is translating something from Russian and doesn't always come out correctly. So the w one family gave my grandparents a very old car. I mean, it was still drivable and we were very happy because we couldn't afford another car. And so I was, I was being appreciative and I wrote them a thank you note. I said, thank you so much for giving my grandparents the car. It is really worthless to them. <laughs> And <laughs> and then one time we were in Fort Worth, you know, and the sign said stockyards. And I said, ah, that's where they trade stock. <laughs> now, <laughs> this, was <laughs> this was before I knew anything about American geography. We were going to take a three-day trip and I on the car. And I said, well, we'll go to Los Angeles for a day and then just for a couple hours to Boston and then go back, you know. <laughs> 
And this is one of my favorites. I mean, I still can't believe I said that anyway. Um, I suppose knowing I'm from another culture was a, like a cultural question. A uh, guy asked me, do you have a favorite star? And I said, well, I don't really know astronomy that well. <laughs> and after a long trip, I told my husband, thank you for your safe and reckless driving. And he said, reckless? <laughs> Why reckless? And I said, well, because you didn't have any wrecks. It was wreck less. <laughs> and you know, sometimes it doesn't matter how long you've lived in a country, it's just the fact that you weren't born here and you're still missing some songs and expressions. This one is actually for the stage left band. You guys are gonna love this story. Um, one time I was performing here, I think I was wearing some kind of black leather or something, and um, as, I was <laughs> as I was going down the stairs, they sang that song, you know, she's a brick house. <laughs> so I came home and I asked my husband, I said, what is that song? He said, what song? I said, well, I don't remember exactly the words, but it's like somebody is living in the brick house. <laughs> Yeah, time really flies. I, I just can't believe, you know, my husband and I just had 15th anniversary. And uh, thank you. <laughs> and, um, and my son just finished elementary school. I mean, there's going to be plenty. Thank you. <laughs> and ahead of many late summer nights, and there'll be plenty of time to tell you more hilarious, embarrassing, and very awkward stories next time.